Adventures. Uh, this session is going to be run by Fred Kirby. Um, it's a customer focused presentation. So Fred, just to introduce him, is senior consultant at Sopra Stereo. And he's going to be showcasing some white space integration uh, that's been implemented at Broxbourne. Uh, and he's going to be supported by Helen Shaw from um, Charlie's integration team. Um, so uh, without further ado, I think I'll just hand over to Fred, if that's all right. Perfect. Thanks, Andy. Hi, everyone. Um, so I think just before we start, um, we will be recording everything. Um, you can ask any questions and, and comments in your chat. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a Q&A at the end of the session, and, and you, can, you can join the conversation by tweeting on there as well. As Andy said, uh, I'm going to be talking about CXM's integration capabilities out of the box. Um, I've been working um, on and off with, with, with Broxbourne, Borough of Broxbourne for about just over a year now. Um, and um, on, on their digital transformation program. And um, I've been working with, with Sopra Stereo in, in our consulting for, for a few years now. So uh, Sopra Stereo, for those of you who haven't heard of us, um, we've got a very strong presence in Europe. We're primarily uh, a French company, but, but really growing across Europe. Um, and, and we work in sort of systems integration and, and infrastructure management. And we're really, we're really um, focused on on growing our consulting business um and and that's consulting based uh engagements like like what broxbourne is, is 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 a real focus for us and, and and something that we're that we're doing a lot more of um and there's a bit more on there that i'll i'll let you read in your own time but that's us um so broxbourne council sopra Syria have had a great relationship with broxbourne council for a long time um in July 2019, we went live with the full Jardu product suite. Um, it was the fastest ever Jardu implementation at the time, I believe 13, 14 weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, we also opened a brand new reception area, which had that real customer focus on sort of self-serve technology and, and, and things like that. So we redesigned that. Uh, brand new ways of working to help improve customer experience and, and, and completely changed the way the way a lot of staff work. Um, but that was that was just the start. That was just the the, the MVP, the minimum viable product. Um, so there were there were sort of four key work streams that we've worked in for this transformation program. Uh, within technology, it's been a real focus on, on that self-serve technology, um, integrating lots of different systems, so payments, Office 365. We've rolled out the My Account functionality. We've got the white space integration, which is what I'm here to talk to you about, and 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 lots of other things uh, as well. Um, I think we've actually got 150 customer experience journeys because we went live with a new COVID uh, journey yesterday. So um, lots happening in that space, um, and really rapid um, work going on there. Um, we rolled out, again, staying on COVID, we rolled out Microsoft Teams in four days and the council was able to, to, to work from home really quickly and efficiently. And I think that's, that's, that's down to that, all that change that, that's been going on over the last 18 months um, and, and completely changed the way customers are contacting and, and interacting with the council. So um, brand new messaging systems and, and, and different types of, of queries being handled there. Um, now, I'm sure uh, a lot of you um, are, are in a similar similar boat, but when I when I first joined Broxbourne, I had no idea how much time I'd spend talking about bins um, and, and waste in general, but especially missed bin. Missed bin is, is, is definitely our, our sort of highest volume journey that, that of contact to the council. Um, and when we arrived, it was it was something that, that we wanted to take a look at straight away. Um, so this is this is sort of the old mist bin journey that, that the council used to have. I won't go into to too much detail, but I think the key point, points are here. Everything was 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 reported via the phone um, and you had to wait until 4 p.m. of the day that your that your mist bin was um, that your bin was missed to to, to sort of report it. And then there was a lot of manual keying and, 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 and administration that went around that process. 
Um, and then on the customer side, it was it was sometimes harder to find out the outcome of your of your report when your bin was was collected or whether it was going to be collected. Um, so it was it was it was a journey that was that was causing a fair amount of of, of difficulty and, and and pain for for the council and for for the for the residents of the borough of Broxbourne. So we went live again. That term minimum viable product. We went live with that um, and and. In, in July, and this is uh, the council rolled out a white space waste management system, and this had in cab technology. It meant that the depot could stay in contact with everything going on um, out on the streets with all the, the, the wagons and, and what was going on there, and automated a lot of their processes. We created a, a fairly simple report it form using XFP and uh, CXM for the for the case management system, so both Jardu tools, um, and it, it reduced the need for reporting after 4 p.m. and it reduced those the number of contact center calls straight away. Um, and then customers got used to being updated via email if their case was accepted or rejected, and uh, and why as well. So. Um, it was a it was a vast improvement as as you can imagine. Um, so uh, there were still some issues, and the first one was was around qualifying questions. So we found that a lot of people were reporting missed bins, but they weren't what we could call a valid report for a missed bin. They didn't meet our checks. So we tried to put sort of qualifying questions within the form, um, and they're a bit blurry there. But was your bin on the boundary by seven a.m. for example? have you got the correct collection week? Um, and this was sort of this self-reporting, trying to find out if, if, if people are, are doing accurate reports. And, and we found they weren't very effective. So less than 1% of customers were answering in a way that, that would disqualify their report. And it, it wasn't creating a great customer experience. And then the other side is that there was a lot, a lot of manual effort from staff. So you had this fantastic waste management system where the crews could go out and, and communicate with, with staff back at, back at the depot. Um, but you, on the other side, you had this disconnect, you had this CXM system, which was how the, the, the staff were kind of interacting with the customers. So we knew we had to connect these two systems together and, and, and we needed to look at how we could do that. And to do that, we first started out with looking at what those checks were. So how do we decide whether a missed bin report is is uh, is going to be valid and going to be accepted by the system? <clears throat> so we came up with six different uh, checks that we wanted to make before accepting or rejecting uh, a missed bin report. Some of them are, are, are very obvious, valid box on postcode. You have to be in the borough. Uh, to report a missed bin to us. Um, you have to be subscribed to that service, Green Waste. You have to have a Green Waste subscription. Um, and again, all of this information, apart from the first one, is, is all stored within the Whitespace uh, waste management system. So Whitespace knows when a street has been completed, when the crews have gone down that street, and they know whether a, an exception has been recorded against that property or anything like that. Um, so we we went through all of these and we knew that these all of this information that we needed was in white space and customers were entering things in CXM. So after quite a, a, a lengthy process and, and trial and error and things like that, we we, we chose uh, our middleware software. So um, the system that we would use to integrate these two. And this is what it looks like. So this is Integramax. Um, and this is our missed bin sequence in a sort of visual diagram of, of what that looks like. Um, and I'll, I will go into to a little bit more detail in, at some sections. But I think if, if this looks quite daunting, um, the key things are that it's completely no code or basically low code um, uh, to, to integrate the two systems and the whole journey. So going from the very far left which is that red circle, which was our webhook, our ping out from CXM, all the way to the far right where you've got the, the successful ping back into CXM to say, yep, we're going to accept this misbin. That takes about two to three seconds. 
So from a customer experience point of view, it's seamless and very quick, um, but it's got, it's got all the checks that we needed. Um, the reason we went with Integromat, we analyzed a few different systems. So you may have heard of Zapier and, and, and some other tools. We chose Integromat because a, um, and I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute, um, we, our white space waste management system uses SOAP as an API um, call, which is a little bit less supported, so it wouldn't work on, on Zapier and some other tools. And uh, B, because it was, it was a nice and simple, easy to manage uh, system, we're very keen as a, as a transformation program that, that we don't build black boxes and, and, and hand them to a council, hand them to back to the client and, and the client not be able to tweak them or change them or learn how to maintain them. So we felt that Integromat was, was something that we could, we could do the knowledge transfer, do the training on and, and, and equip the council to be able to, to manage and, and run themselves. Um, so that's it end to end. I'm going to focus now, we're going to go to the left. So that that red circle and this is the webhook so this is this is the alerts from cxm on uh, case creation um and for those of you who are who were on uh, tom's session earlier today talking about the sort of the changes that they're going to make at the moment you will re receive a webhook alert um every time any case is created so that red dot will sort of be activated it will be sent a message from cxm every single time a case is created and this is just some of the information that will come through uh, to your system, to Integromat when, when that is activated. Um, and one of the things that I really like about how CXM manages addresses is this is all the information you get about an address. So you get your unique postal reference number, unique street reference number, the summary, you get it all broken down into, into all those different permutations that you might want. Um, we've also got along the right, we've got the title. So it is a reporter misbin. That is our case server, uh, our case type name. So we know it, it is the right type of case that we're looking at. And then you've also got the personal details, but we don't use any of that for the rest of this process. So we can just forget those and move on. Okay. So the first, the first filter that we do, and this is this is a zoom in on on that original scenario that you saw earlier, and in, in Integromat, you've got your incoming webhook here on the left, and any time you have this filter icon, this this funnel, that means we're just we're just filtering out uh, all the all the activations of that webhook that don't meet the criteria, and that criteria checks that it's a missed bin. So it sounds like. Coming soon, we won't need that because we'll be able to, to filter and have a CXM webhook only send out when it's when it's a certain case type. So that's exciting for me. Um, <clears throat> so the first call that we then do into the Whitespace system is a SOAP request. And it's very simple. We send uh, the UPRN, the unique postal reference number, so my, my address. Uh, to Whitespace and the service that I'm reporting. So I'm going to report a recycling for my address and Whitespace will then ping us back the next date that that uh, collection date is. So we can check doing so, some maths whether we fit within that within that valid date range that Roxbourne have. You have to report a date a missed bin within two days of your of your missed bin of your bin collection service. So we pull that back and then we do a little bit of, of, of sort of checking on that data from Whitespace in those boxes there. <clears throat> and then this is the first point where we can where we can push information back into, uh, into CXM. So these blue circles out here are us updating the CXM case from Integromat using that that rest service api that, that cxm provide us so the first transition is uh we would transition it to rejected if there was no service found so this customer doesn't subscribe to green waste we don't want to we don't want to accept their missed bin report the second would be that they've got an invalid date so they're reporting uh and actually your miss bin, your your bin's not been collected because your bin is due to be collected tomorrow for example so we would 
reject that. Um, and I'll just show you what that call looks like. Um, so I've obviously blurred out some bits of this, but essentially we are just sending to our, to our uh, CXM instance. Um, we're using the case reference that we've pulled from the webhook and we're transitioning it from in progress to canceled. And there in the content, we're able to just put the reason. Um, so I believe this would be a transition saying that the, the collection crews have said, actually, your, your misfin was, was rejected because uh, you put cardboard in the, wrong, in the wrong bin or something like that, and they would reject it. So when we transition this case, what that also means on the CXM side is that as soon as that transition happens, that value is added into CXM and that can be imported into the emails. So the customer within a second is receiving an email on the outcome of their check. So they're receiving the update and they're told, right, uh, uh, my miss bin's rejected for this reason. Um, and that's, that's very simple. Um, finally, then we sort of imagine that we've we've gone through that. I've reported a missed bin and it's passed every single one of those six checks. So we're happy with it. We think it is from at the moment looks like a valid missed bin report. So the first thing we do is 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 we do a call into Whitespace and we create a missed bin request. We create that worksheet. Um, that's like a job for, for the crews to then go and collect. Whitespace will then pass me back a, a, a reference, and then we call back into CXM, use that service API, and update the case. And we give put attached to the case the CXM re, uh, the Whitespace reference, so that you've got that traceability between the two systems, and you transition it from submitted to uh, in progress. I believe a customer will receive an email saying your bin's due to be collected. You know, leave it out. And we're happy with it, and 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 the the, the job goes out um, to in straight into white space. So that entire process, there's been no human intervention. No one's had to 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 bother with with anything or touch anything, and the crews have received received the job. Um, and that that is the the entire phase one of our missed bin process and, and, and it's very seamless and, and, and really quick. And it was, it was pretty easy uh, to build, I think. Um, but there's still a second part. So the second part is that the crews have now received the job. It's been assigned to uh, the, the waste management team and um, they've got my address. They know that I've got a green waste uh, bin that, that, that wasn't collected. And then they get to the end of the street of my street and they mark it as complete. And when they mark it as complete, that will then, uh, white space will now ping out a message to a webhook, which we've set up on Integromat again. And then here, what that's doing is it will either transition the case again to say, yep, yeah, Fred, your, your green waste has been collected. That's complete. It will mark it off as complete in CXM. And it will send me an email saying, you know, don't worry, your bin won't be there when you get back from work. Alternatively, the, the crews may have arrived um, to collect my bin and um, I've, I've locked it in a bin store or it's too heavy or any of the other um, reasons that we, that we have programmed on the system. And if that's the case, then it will transition. It will transition the case again and say, actually, your missed bin was, was rejected because of this reason. Um, and I will get the reason again. And then the final outcome is just if there's a if there's no reason that they can come up with, uh, sorry, that they can that that is programmed in the system, then the the staff just just have to go and manually do it. So we we send out a notification internally to the staff to tell them to do it. So that end to end is is the entire missed bin process, and that's what it looks like. Um, so we sort of looked at, at what it looked like before. I think now you can see that there's um, an easy to read, really simple form that, that, that doesn't ask many complicated questions. Um, you, you put in your, your address and you put in your, your service that you require. 
you um, instantly find out about any exceptions against your property or any of those those checks that, that we listed earlier um, and, and you receive that update via email. Um, there's absolutely no admin team that is needed in that process. Um, they are completely gone from the system. So um, the admin is is only needed um, when the when the crew need to to assign a worksheet out to the to the crew. So it goes straight into the right system. The customers get that gold standard of communication. They are constantly updated in the process within seconds of everything that happens. And your customer agents are not spending their time dealing with normal queries that could be that could be automated. So it's been a very uh, quick and simple process. So I just have a few sort of reflections after um, having gone live with it. A few lessons learned. Um, Tom mentioned on, on his call a tool called um, Postman. Postman we use to test everything. Um, it can, it's 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 absolutely invaluable. Um, you can you can test all your API calls that you want to make into the system. Um, it's it's also now how I do a lot of things in CXM um, because when you're testing MISPIN, for example, and you need to raise another MISPIN report, you don't want to go through the form. Just have a, a, a pre a pre made call in in Postman that will do that for you straight away. Um, we talked about about SOAP APIs. Um, they're, they're slightly more clunky than than the REST API. So so REST API is is, is what you will see mostly. Uh, it's certainly what Jardu use. Uh, our, our white space tool use use SOAP API, um, and and it just slightly limits what 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 you can integrate with. But Integromat does it and handles it quite well. So we were happy with that. Um, I'm sure some people will be alerted when they see use live data for testing, but um, we 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 anonymized it all, obviously. Um, but when you're trying to integrate two systems, don't rely on on a workflow or an instruction booklet for how this tool is meant to be used. Um, use how the tool is actually being used. So the way we did it for for Miss Bin is we would take every live um, Miss Bin report. We would anonymize it using Integromat and raise the exact same thing in our test system. And then our test system could do all the checks and, and we could sort of get a real volume of tests going through. Um, so we've got, a, we've got a poll here. So have you been inspired to build some of the in, uh, integrations uh, with CXM that, that, that I've uh, mentioned? So do you mention those in the chat or, or anything like that? Um, finally, a lesson learned is use CXM for all your emails and notifications. Um, your, your staff will be used to CXM being your, your source of truth. It should be how you communicate with, with, um, with your, your customers. Um, and, it, and it means that that history tab is still used. So again, with the missed bin, we're transitioning cases and sending the outcome from CXM. We're not, we're not using any other email services. Um, and some other uses that we use the, the service API and the webhooks and things for mass transition of cases. Um, I'm, I'm sure we've all been in a situation where suddenly you've got to take 200 cases or something and, and, and move them from one to the other. You can, you can do that in seconds using Postman or, or, or another tool like that uh, really simply. Same for importing data into CXM. So we've got a, had a few things where we want to move from using a spreadsheet or, or another tool um, to using CXM for the case management. And that's fine for new journeys because they'll all be automatically added to CXM. But how do we how do we get those that data into CXM for, for the for the cases that they've been managing in the past? We can just put them through using that service API and it's and it's quick and seamless. Um, outputting to spreadsheets for reporting and databases. Uh, so we, uh, Integromat integrates quite well with Office 365. We have spreadsheets where a new line is created every time a, a new CXM case is created for certain case types and things like that with, with information for finance or, or whatever you need. 
Um, and we definitely want to start exploring some of the database and, and the reporting and the dashboards, et cetera. Um, you can even use Amazon Alexa to, to check the status of your case. So we used a tool called VoiceFlow, which is uh, automated and it's, and it's very visually, uh, visually easy. We did a hack day a couple of days ago um, and we just built an Amazon Alexa that could, you know, you could say what's the status of my missed bin if you wanted to. Um, and also to integrate with Jira. So we use CXM for all of our service um, and support tickets internally. And I click on a button and it gets added to Jira and onto the backlog for the for the team to look at. So it, it, it speeds speeds things up like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's it. So if you've got any questions or or anything coming on the polls, then let me know. Thanks. Um, thanks for that, Fred. It's good to see that showcase. Uh, it's very interesting um, in terms of that use of Integra Matt. That's the first time I've I've really seen it, and it's interesting to learn about its capabilities with SOAP um, over things like Zapier, which I hadn't, hadn't understood before. So that's that's really good to see. Um, we have had a few questions come in, so we'll start off with those if that's okay. Um, <laughs> And then uh, maybe we'll come on to the poll results. Um, so in terms of some of the questions, uh, Andy Johnson has asked, uh, what level of technical ability is required to configure Integra Map? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So um, I, I'm not highly technical. I'm, I'm relatively technical, but also self-taught and, and things like that. Integra Map at its, at its most basic, I was, I was talking to Andy before we started, it's, it's a very visual, um, sort of uh, way of, of, of organizing it and setting it up. It's a bit like with CXM, it's, it's very logical, you know, if this, then that uh, sort of process. It's, it's mostly user interface. They have a very good support system. Um, so their, their service desk are very good and they have, they have uh, forums and things which will help you. Um, I would say the most complicated thing that I have in there is is the sort of equivalent to uh, macros in in Excel. So that that sort of level, uh, if you take it to the to the very furthest. But some of the stuff that we do, just creating a new line in in a spreadsheet or anything like that, anyone anyone should be able to do. Excellent. Um, and I think probably the the session after this with James Kirkhands a bit later. There's a few other solutions that will probably be showcased in that so again everyone who's interested in solutions like integra map probably worth joining that session um another question from andy um in jado integrations there is a white space power suite element um does this not remove the need to use middleware and are there plans to develop this to achieve everything done with integra map so i think that's probably aimed more at us uh fred that one <laughs> Um, and Helen, do you want to um, answer that one as well? Uh, yeah, I can take that. Um, so I think we, we pretty much um, developed them at a similar sort of time. Um, I was aware that uh, Fred was looking at, at uh, having some integration between CXM and Whitespace. Um, and I think you had quite tight deadlines to, to get that done. Um, and obviously, there were quite a lot of complicated checks in there that we'd have to factor into the integration. So I think that was probably one of the key um, drivers for you guys going and doing it yourselves. That be mm. yeah, absolutely, and 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 it was maintainable by the council, so the council could tweak it and say, actually, now we want three days, and they wouldn't have to to worry with interrupting you guys. I think. Sure. Yeah, and in terms of the um, the Jado integration, so that is it's it's very similar to to the functionality that Fred's developed in terms of. You've got two-way communication there, so you can you can raise a worksheet in in Whitespace, and then when we get updates back from Whitespace, they will go into CXM. Um, so the only thing that I guess isn't covered in that is some of the more complicated checks. There are some um, in the forms product in XFP, um, but perhaps won't cover all the checks that any one council may need because everybody's workflow is different in terms of misbins and, and the rules that you have. Yeah. Okay, thanks. thanks both for inputting on that one. Um, question from Peter Large. Have you found that customers complain in other ways 
corporate complaints, contact us forms, etc. Um, yes, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and, but I think I think that one of the one of the powerful things that we've done is we've freed up uh, our customer contact center to be able to deal with with complaints rather than dealing with that day to day churn of 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 accurate and inaccurate reports. Um, and 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 the system is 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 pretty good. So um, I mean, you know, if 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 you reject someone's missed bin report, I suppose you're always you're always going to get people being unhappy about it. But the council have their their complaints process within that. But I think I think what we've actually done is freed up the people who would normally just be doing manual data entry to deal with those those much rarer complaint processes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Imran has asked a question, can we get some more info on Postman for testing? Did you do anything in particular with Postman on your side, Fred, when you were building out this, this integration? Or? No, not, not, not particularly. Um, so you can, you can do sort of when, when I talk about testing with, with Postman, I just, it's a much more visual and easier uh, to make sure that, that sort of any API call that you're going to do test it in Postman, and then you're sort of copying and pasting that 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 into uh, into the integration tool that you're using. Um, so it's it's much more about just just having you can also save things so you can, you know, I've got files saved for report a miss bin, for example, I can just double click and, and send out 100. So it's, it's much more like that than we don't do any mass texting or anything and testing or anything like that. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, short of that, Imran, there's the there's a whole heap of info on the web about Postman, what it is, how it works. Um, if you drop us a note afterwards, if there's something in particular you're thinking about, then I'm sure we can we can help answer some questions around that. Um, I guess a question from me, uh, Fred. Um, I mean, in terms of the throughput, the throughput that you've seen, um, have you seen like a, an increase in submissions or? A, a reduction in incorrect cases being raised because of the changes that you've implemented here. Have you, have you kind of got any metrics around that at the moment? Or yeah, I don't I don't have any metrics to hand. Um, I think that the the main the main sort of increase has been that, that the council aren't having to deal with those those sort of incorrect misbins. And 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 if you spoke to anyone, whether it was a, the the customer contact point or, or the waste team. They were spending a large part of their day dealing with people that you know hadn't left their bin out at the right time, or, or you know who who'd not not followed their rules and, and were reporting missed bins. So I think uh, definitely eliminated those, and it it's sort of. Um, but we 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 haven't looked at the figures the figures too closely, but it would be really interesting to see. Yeah. Okay. And have you had to? Um revisit the process that you've defined in Integra Map so far? Have you had to go back and adjust it or adapt it at any point since you've, uh, yeah. since you've gone live? Or? Yeah, so we so we we were really, really keen because, as, as I said, it's, it's it's such a huge journey and I'm sure anyone else who, who's working with or for, or for a council and, and, and we were saying before, you know, MISPIN is, is, is one of the most important things to get right. So we were really keen to, to take that, that slow approach and, and and that iterative approach. Um, so with regards to those six checks, we didn't roll out all six checks at once. Um, I sort of talked about how we had the first process, um, the first part of the process, and then and then the second part of the process, which was the white space feeding back in into CXM after the bin had been collected or not. We, we, we spaced those out quite a lot. Um, and, and then other than that, there were some, there were some minor tweaks that were sort of just just making it making it slightly more efficient and, and things like that but nothing too okay. drastic excellent um any questions you want to ask helen or all good uh no i don't hear from me okay all right well with that we've come to the end of the question so i just thought we'd have a quick look at the poll room um and it looks like 55% of people have said yes. Um, so it looks like you've inspired a few people there, Fred. That's good to see. Uh, just 7%, two people said no, and 38% were not sure. So that's, that's uh, positive to see as a result of that presentation. So that's good. Um, okay, so I mean, if I could just take the opportunity just to remind you about the, the 
the support for the for the charity, the Ovarian Cancer Action. We've gotten to 81% now of our target, so we're really we're getting there. Just need that little bit final push over the last presentation of the day. I did see some questions in a previous session about uh, the color of the paint on my walls, interestingly. I think someone's uh, quite keen on it. And I'll be happy to divulge that information if we can get to 100%. Um, so that would be that would be really good um, if we could make that happen. Um, so next up um, today and um, last session of the day is from James Cokerhands um, from Jardu. And he's going to be doing a CXM Innovation Hub session. So he's going to be looking very much at things like um, Zapier and, and how they can be used with the platform to, to do other cool things. Um, and alongside him will be Mike Holmes, who's a technical consultant from Methods. And that session starts at 3 p.m. today. So enough time to uh, check your email, get a, a fresh cup of coffee, and then join us for that last session. And hopefully we'll see that uh, percentage up at 100 and I can give you my paint color. Excellent. <laughs> thanks a lot, everyone. And thanks a lot, Fred. That was a great presentation and I enjoyed that. Thanks very much. Right. Thanks a lot, everyone.